Great to have you joining with us today. My name is Anissa Mitchell. I am with PMD Alliance, and I'm very excited to welcome to you our special viewing of Gina in Motion, which shares the journey of Gina, a young onset person with Parkinson's who embarks on a road trip in search of information, direction, and wisdom. We know many people with Parkinson's are on a similar journey. So after the video showing that we're gonna to have today, we're gonna to come back and we're gonna have a discussion um, and a Q&A with those involved. So we'll have Doc, Ma Dr. Matthew Stern with us, Gina's with us, Jerry Foley, the producer from Mediflex, and Arianne Brinknecker from Supernus. And they're all gonna share their journey creating this video what sparked this special partnership and how you also can share your journey. We want to thank our partners for this program today. Uh, Mediflix, who provides trusted video content across several conditions and disease states, including Parkinson's disease, obesity, heart health, women's health, emotional and mental health, and oncology through original and partnered programs, such as with Supernus with a different spin on education. They use entertaining formats and engaging storytelling to help people learn about disease aspects and to hear both from experts and people with the disease. We wanna thank also our partners, Supernus, who are funders and collaborators on this project. So I wanna first invite you guys to open up your chat box. We would love to hear where everyone's joining us from. We love seeing where everyone's at and to connect with you. And after the video, we're going to um, engage, I said like uh, before, a conversation with some of those people that um, were part of making this video, including Gina, and we would love to hear from you. Um, I want to remind you also that this video is streaming uh, through Zoom. So we are contending with uh, video connections from your internet. So if there's some lagging, I would maybe recommend turning off your video and seeing if it helps. Um, it is being recorded, so you always can go back and view it from PMD Alliance's website. But I also am going to make sure you all get the uh, direct link to Mediflix because they have this as well as other videos about Parkinson's disease on there. So we will be sure to share those. So at the end, I wanna make sure that we remind you to save your chat so you can also go back and, and review those things later. So uh, without further ado, we are gonna start the video. It is around 20 minutes, so stay with us afterwards because we are gonna come back and have a conversation. So when are you leaving? When, 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 when? Like when, when? When, when? When, when? Tuesday. You're gonna, you guys are gonna fall apart without me. Oh, I, I got all choked up. I got off a clip. I'm like having separation anxiety from leaving you guys. Gina doesn't use the fact that she has Parkinson's as an excuse to, um, to hold herself back. The fact that she can compose herself so professionally, I think that's just really. I just really, really gonna miss her. Um, humor and the light that she brings. I know that she's making a trip out to Eastern United States, I, I believe New York perhaps, and she'll be driving from Vancouver on the West Coast all the way out there. Like sometime this spring or last this winter, I decided I'm gonna do this brain surgery called DBS, deep brain stimulation, and they just put probes in your brain to like, it helps, it helps with Parkinson's symptoms and stuff. And you decrease your meds and you, your brain's like electrically stimulated, the signals are electrically stimulated instead of like the chemicals regulating the signaling. It's, it's kind of like, like permanent in a sense, not like a one month treatment. No, it's, it's like ongoing. Yeah, you become one of the machines. <laughs> Miss Gina, for your upcoming journey, um, safe travels. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Hopefully when it's warm. I really wish you the best of luck in hoping you find what you're looking for. 
I'm sorry that I can't be there with you. Oh, thank you. Till we meet again. I don't think that this is the end of the road for her. I think this is just a beginning part of a, a long journey. Thank you. I'm still in denial. <laughs> I still don't, like, I don't realize I'm leaving and I won't until I'm like in the car and driving like for eight hours and I'll be like, oh shit, I'm actually going on a long road trip. Imagine myself in an automobile A hundred miles an hour, only me at the wheel I want it to shine, to be only mine The engine has to be just a one of a kind How many dollars do I I just, I meet, when I meet with like older people I just like hearing their thoughts on life Like what was important to them What would, if they can go back and t talk to themselves what, what advice would they give or what, would, what do they wish they knew? diagnosed, I got angry. I'm not sure who I was angry with, but I got angry. And I can remember what the doctor said. I got good news and I got bad news. I don't even remember what the good news was. Yeah, I was going to say, what was the good news? Well, I waited two more years and four more neurologists, and finally I had to accept it. <laughs> yeah, I was working at NASA. Yeah, that's cool. I was a program project manager over a research support project. It sounds like it's a stressful job, so. It was stressful, and that didn't help the Parkinson's. Yeah. It has created a lot of challenges in our marriage, but we take it as a positive, and it truly has brought us closer together. The thing about Parkinson's is it's unpredictable. Yeah, that's the scariest part. It is progressive, but it's, it can be managed. What you can't do is let yourself get depressed. Yeah. Because I firmly believe your state of mind controls your entire being. Yeah. Depression is your enemy. When you get depressed, the symptoms just take over. So you got to keep your mind right, positive. Like the saying goes, I have Parkinson's, but Parkinson's does not have me. <laughs> Nothing has you, it sounds like. It's like a squatter that you can't get out of your house. <laughs> totally. I always say it's like an unwanted He's not welcome. <laughs> but he's still but he there. He's still there. <laughs> Today, the Parkinson is really acting up. Yeah. So don't you want to, like, kick and scream and lose your mind on those days? I know I do. No. I get really, really frustrated. No, I, I don't generally feel like that. The older patient has experienced a lot of adversities in their lifetime, whereas the younger hasn't. And they develop fears. And those fears can be more damaging than the sickness itself. Have you ever felt afraid that you were going to get worse and be a burden to your family? Yes. And that fear stays with you. But you got to suppress it. You make it sound so simple. <laughs> but it is that simple. In our house, she will tell you, we have no pity party. This is the hand that I was dealt. Then I've got to face it and find a solution. It's not about how I feel. It's about how my husband feels. David is my strength. He, he's all I have. It was very nice meeting you guys. Oh, it was wonderful meeting you. <laughs> Thank you, God, Karen. <laughs> all the best to you. Please stay Thank in touch. You. You certainly will. All right, come on, Zach. <sighs> you ready? Hello, 
Hello, Gina. Dr. Stern? Yeah. Nice to meet you. So good to meet you. Yeah, you're good. Good to meet you, yeah, too. Welcome Thanks to so Philadelphia. Much. Thank you. So you've come from far and wide, huh? Yeah, I did drive four weeks to see you. <laughs> Hop in. So our travel companions here are Zach and Cookie. Hello, this is Zach. Zach. And uh, Cookie's right there, hiding out. Awesome. Yeah, take a cool. left up here. Let me know where to go. You know, if you were to sort of recap this journey that you've had over the last three weeks, you know, what you started out thinking about and what weren't you thinking about now in terms of approaching your Parkinson's? It's interesting because in the, the beginning of this, I was pretty settled on having DBS. Uh -huh. So, I mean, still, still on the line, but thought I was going to do it. Not sure I was going to do it. This is something that's not going to go away. But if I just continue to work my ass off working out and just accepting the fact that I can't work my, my day job as much as I used to. Well, tell me about that a little bit. What do you mean you can't work your day job as much as you used to? Well, if I'm working three hours, if, if, you know, if I'm stiff in the morning for an hour or two and I need to get eight hours of sleep at night and if I, um, I'm working out one to three hours a day and then I have to you know, eat and cook, practice of law is not forgiving. No, I know. And how much, um, how much would you say you're doing now? Anywhere from zero to like five hours a day. Okay. I mean, I really cut back, like more than half. I went part-time officially. And is that okay? Are you comfortable with that or would you rather be full-time? I'd rather be somewhere between... Half and full? Like half and full, like 60, 70%. That is a totally realistic goal. And if you're not there, then it's worth thinking about what you need to do next in order to get there. Yeah, that's a good perspective. I mean, it's true, it's, I mean... You can pull over right there, right. There's a message in that story, I think. Yeah. And certainly for you there is, because it ain't your time. You got a long way to go. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. I'm not ready. You got to... a long way to go. I'm not ready for anything to stop. I feel like I'm just getting started. Exactly. So great to meet you. Nice to meet you, Look too. Look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, yeah. Drive great. carefully, OK? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> I won't. Onward and upward. Be well. Bye. He's not your typical neurologist. He's more focused on talking about the individual and talking about me and what my goals are, rather than just looking at me as a Parkinson's patient. He flat out asked me, what are your goals? Or how do you want to have balance between work and, and disease management? It was a different conversation than I've had with neurologists thus far. It didn't focus on medicine and symptoms. I've heard Jeff is a physicist and he has Parkinson's, so I'm definitely looking forward to meeting with him and chatting with him. And I've heard his partner, Richard, has some type of work in social work. And they sound like pretty cool guys, so I'm looking forward to meeting them. Hello. Hi. This is Zach. Zach. And then this is Cookie. They're OK, Jeff and Richard. Right, Jeff, Richard. Jeff and Richard, OK, yeah. nice to meet you. I discovered um, I was having trouble when I did a, a walk between two 14,000-foot peaks. With, and somewhere in between, I fell in, on a gravity part and landed on my face. And I said, oh, gee, what, what happened? I, and I fall sometimes, but I never land on my face. Yeah, usually you, you can move your limbs fast enough to kind of Yeah, recover. roll yourself over, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's your major problem? I mean, how, what, meds, what's the... just the fluctuations. I'll be, you know, stiff in the morning, shaky, take meds. They soak in, I feel great. And then they um, start to wear off. And About I get an hour before, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> what were your first? like emotional reactions to getting diagnosed. Did you have any of that? I realized that, that I was going to become more and more burdensome as time went on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not his choice. He didn't wake up and say, you know, I'm going to have Parkinson's today. <laughs> uh, Richard is the uh, ultimate social care person. It's almost like a lot of improv. Sometimes you have to be real creative. Like sometimes I'll do something and it won't work, and sometimes it, I'll be creative and it will work. And, you know, it's like sometimes like, one day he was like having a bad day and I gave him warm milk and he said, oh, I feel much better. <laughs> like a cat. <laughs> I think it's very unfair that I ask him to, but he gives willingly. He, he's able to support me, I guess, whenever I, I can't support myself. There's, you know, no choice in this. You know, this is, we just deal with it. That's the way it is. And we move on and we take the next step. A very practical and a positive attitude. You know, you have to keep your passions, you have to keep your loves, you have to be 
excited by life, you know, the, and it's just a little harder because you have this, you know, this reminder. This reminder, this yeah, reminder yeah. right. Yeah. The best thing I have in my life is Richard. <laughs> 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 and I can't imagine going through this disease without having such a person around. He's a good conscience yeah. uh, and a good motivator and asks almost nothing in return. Uh, my love I mean, <laughs> is, is freely given. It doesn't have to be asked for. That's awesome. Probably everyone should have a Richard. I mean, it's, uh... Do you have a brother? <laughs> 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 when you have a moment where you're just like, you're so frustrated, you're like, ah! Like, how do you kind of get out of that circle of, of maybe self-pity? I don't do much of that either. Oh. <laughs> okay. You're a physicist. <laughs> I'm a physicist. I live my, yeah. I'm not bothered by that, that particular emotion. The universe is a big place. And then we're gonna lift up, and you gotta breathe, Jeff. There you go, Richard. There you go. Good. And keep breathing. That's it. I had to breathe yep. too. You do too. <laughs> it's exactly, exactly right. When I see Richard and Jeff and the way that they love each other deeply, and Parkinson's is just something that's there. It's not the focus of their existence. It, it definitely gives me hope that it's possible to have a good relationship with somebody. I'm super excited uh, about being home. Finally, after four weeks of being in the car with uh, my two dogs, but I'm really excited to see them, to see my whole, my family, my tribe very soon. I have no idea how many miles we've traveled. A lot, thousands, I have no idea, thousands. Late January of 2020 was the last time I was home. I miss home a lot. I don't know why. I don't know if it's age. I don't know if it's COVID. But it was really hard when I was in Vancouver. <laughs> I don't really feel like traveling anywhere. I like just the comfort of waking up every day in the same place. <laughs> just seeing family and friends and just being around them, their energy, their comfort, their love. If you ever feel, if you ever feel like you're moving along. Come on, guys. I'll take you home. Come here, Joey Bear. How are you? You crying? I know mom feels bad. <laughs> you crying? I'm gonna stop crying. Oh, all these other people have to greet. Hey, you. Who beats here? Say hello, my Irish aunties. Hi, you sweetie. How are you? Good to see you. Oh. How long are you staying? Oh, we don't know yet. A week? A day? No, like a couple months. Oh, you're going to be here for a couple of months? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's so great being home. It's like a release. I was on my own after I left her, after her father and I split up. I was on my own for 25 years. And I put myself through college and I got my master's degree and I became especially a teacher like I wanted to be. And um, it never bothered me to be on my own. And I think part of my daughter's strengths are because they saw their mother go from scrubbing toilets to, to reaching a goal. She's one of the toughest people I know. She's the kind of person you go to when, you, when, you, when you're ready to go to battle. If you need to be coddled and told how wonderful you are, <laughs> she's not the person to go to. If you're having a difficult moment and you need somebody to give you a pep talk to get through that moment, she's the person to talk to. How does a perfectly healthy child who has lived a healthy life and all of a sudden come down with something so far-fetched? I, I blew me away, really did. Broke my heart. At first I thought, did I do this to her? Did, did I cause this problem? As a parent, that would be the first thing you think of. No, moms, moms and Joey have been taking really good care of me. They're cooking, they're cooking plant-based food which is a big, big deal. <laughs> Got you some nice poor cheese. I know. You know, did she, she didn't tell you I stopped eating dairy? Oh my God, then I have to eat it all by myself. I mean, I'll cheat a little bit. Yeah. We're a tight-knit family. And um, we bleed for each other. Let's put it that way. Just, just having help, having support, is just makes life so much easier. Thank you, guys. You know, I left, I left here like a decade ago. And, um, 
went to BC and then, I don't know, I never, never thought about whether I'd come back or not. And I didn't really know how homesick I was. I've decided against doing DBS surgery for now. I'm not ruling it out forever, but I think for now, it wouldn't be the best option. I'm not afraid for her. Of course, as a mother, I'm scared for anything that your child goes through. There's not one thing about DBS that convinced me to make this decision. It's, it's a combination of a bunch of different things. I think the availability of other medicine, um, the success I'm having with exercise, and being home and having help, and just calming down and lowering my, my stress load overall, um, those factors have, have played a big role in this decision. I did question why it didn't happen to me. Why her? Why not me? I'm old enough. You know, I've, I've put in my dues. I, I, I've lived a life. I've raised my kids. I've, I, I've done it all. Why her? There's nothing you could say to reassure my parents that everything's okay. They have to see it themselves and, and experience it and see me on a bad day or a bad moment, see me on a good day and a good moment. And over time, understand that this disease is weird. It, it sucks one day and the other day it's, it's barely around. So today I'm having a more difficult day than normal. It'll pass. Tomorrow will probably be better. When I go to yoga on Saturday, it'll be better. And I know I've seen that. My mom's gotten a little bit more comfortable with that when she sees me get up every morning, drag my ass out of bed, whether I feel like it or whether I'm lazy. And what, what I'm doing and what the doctors are trying to do and what everybody around me that helps me, you know, my nutritionist, the physiotherapist, the, the martial arts instructors, the yoga instructors, I mean, everybody, the whole team, the whole village of people that, that are helping me. Once they see the, the big picture, they, they feel a little bit better, I think, I sense. I don't know if this place has changed or if I've changed or probably both, but it's nice to be back here. I never, I didn't expect this when I came back. I didn't expect to feel so connected to this place. And I thought it was just visiting people. It would be nice to catch up, but I feel surprisingly connected to my homeland. <laughs>
um, first to ask, you know, your opinion, you know, Mediflix offers such a unique storytelling approach to disease education. I think it's just so well done. That was a beautiful video. It showed not only um, the personal perspective, but peppered in a lot of really good education as well. So can you share why this approach can help people relate to and understand their disease and how it empowers them to be more proactive? Sure. Um, hello, everybody. It's really terrific to be here. And um, thanks to uh, Gina and, and Jerry and certainly uh, Ariane and the other folks at Supernus for making this film possible. Um, I think everybody here will identify with the problems that have existed for a long time in patient education. Um, think of Google and other educational sites. And the problem is, is that they mostly provide generic information. Um, and so an individual with their own unique set of problems is often less uh, left uh, misinformed or misled, which can be devastating for a patient with any kind of chronic illness, particularly Parkinson's disease. And I got very interested because I found that um, I was spending much of my clinic visit time with a patient dispelling what they had found out uh, on currently existing search sites about Parkinson's disease. Um, often causing a great deal of depression and misinformation, as I said earlier, and um, got very interested in, in another form of patient education. Uh, we actually created our own educational website using videos with doctors directly talking to patients, and that led to um, what Metaflix is doing now. So the concept here is that patients learn a lot more and a lot more valuable information by seeing an interaction uh, between an individual with Parkinson's and, and a doctor, a physical therapist, a, another patient, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a much more um, constructive way of, of learning. And, and we found that over, over many years. You have to remember that, as all of you know, your, your time with a physician, your visit, where you're actually talking about a problems that are unique to you can be measured in minutes. This has been studied. Um, there are a lot of reasons for that, but the bottom line is healthcare now is, is, uh, is a combination of what you get from your physician, but it's also what you get from your own, your own initiative in, in getting educated. Um, Metaflix, um, the appeal here is that patients are educated by direct thought leader driven content. They actually see a thought leader interacting with a patient or through documentaries that are both entertaining and educational. Uh, patients are often um, left much more with a sense of well-being than, than, than the sense of ill-being uh, most patients derive from reading uh, about Parkinson's disease on Google or other sources of information. And my whole goal is that patients with this disease and, and many chronic diseases should be left feeling a sense of well-being. That's, that's what this is all about. And uh, I think Metaflix has, has really tapped into a nerve here in enabling patients to really achieve that. Well, I can just tell you that we're already getting feedback um, that they felt like they were really on the journey with Gina. So very well done. And Ariane, so I'm really interested, you know, why did Supernus want to partner with Mediflex to do this video? And how does this tie into an initiative that I know you guys are working on? Yeah, definitely. So excited to be here today. So like at Supernus here, um, you know, we do have kind of a, a robust Parkinson's portfolio, but more importantly, just our commitment and being super passionate about the community, right? The Parkinson's community, um, embracing these kind of iconic moments, right? So um, we love this because it was an ability to being fun and innovative, right? And be, to be super inspired by the people that we get to talk to each day across the country who live with Parkinson's, right? And so we've done some fun and unique initiatives over the past years. People may recognize the Cranes, the Tulip Project, um, the I Am Poems, but this kind of speaks to our overall Be Iconic with PD initiative. And Mediflix was really a unique opportunity to reach new audiences, um, a new platform as Dr. Stern was talking about, and to really kind of partner to create these inspiring, fun, but real people-focused stories, right? And Gina was that perfect match to our Be Iconic with PD initiative, right? And that campaign, our Be Iconic with PD campaign, is really about celebrating and sharing those iconic moments every day, big or small, 
And it doesn't really have to be anything extraordinary, right? But rather real people with Parkinson's and their care partners and their families, loved ones, embracing the journey, right? That's We're all on this journey, um, cheering on victories and, and really learning from the challenges. And so we took on this initiative after hearing from so many people with Parkinson's in the community who, you know, shared, you know, over the years that, yes, we have Parkinson's, but it doesn't define us, right? They're first a lawyer, a daughter, an avid worker outer in Gina's case, right? A husband, a mother, a father, painter, golfer, hockey fan, you know, a grandma, whatever it may be. Um, And we love how Gina and Mediflix um, this, the team have really shared those iconic moments, right, throughout her journey. We all saw those raw, true emotions, the thoughts, the tears, and the laughs along the way. And I think that this, you know, to be iconic with PD community, this is what we're kind of hoping that we can all be together, right, to be super inspired and rally around those iconic moments, but have real valuable, important things that we can take away, but also be inspired as well. So we were so thrilled to be a part of it all. Well, and, you know, the two couples that were in the video were also extremely inspiring, just the love and, you know, they didn't hide the the difficulties, but, you know, what they're able to do to overcome and to connect with one another and support one another is very inspiring. And I know there's a lot of stories out there that can be shared through the Be Iconic platform. So we're going to share some links and invite everyone to share their story, whether it's a picture, a video, a story that you want to place. It's up on Facebook. There's a website. We would love to invite everyone to share how they're being iconic themselves and overcoming their own uh, adversities and issues. And and really, everybody has a beautiful story to tell. So speaking of telling the story, Jerry, your job was to create this engaging education, living with the DZ. So, I mean, you're coming at it, obviously, from a production standpoint. I'm sure, you know, you're learning things about the disease along the way. But I bet that filming this project not only educated you about Parkinson's, but changed you also. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? Well, it, uh, it changed me in the sense that uh, Parkinson's patients are real people and they're functioning and they refuse to be marginalized. And Gina is just the perfect example of somebody who went through her stages of grief and came out the other side and said, okay, how do we deal with this? And you see that also with Dave Williams, who was the NASA engineer. And you saw that with uh, Jeff and Richard, who were down in Philadelphia. They all assessed where they were at and said, well, we're not going to take this lying down. And we're going to use every resource at our disposal to find out as much as we can and to try as many different approaches to it in order to live full lives. And in the case of Gina, um, she has so much in front of her and she's a, a scientist, she's a lawyer, she's also a great person to ride around in the van with. And she is probably the best example of mainstreaming the Parkinson's patient. We are... The Parkinson's patients are members of society and they're not about to retreat from their never their uh, everyday activities and they're not about to retreat from whatever steps they can take to make things better for themselves and more importantly a very generous community and they're not going to retreat from steps they can take to make things better for other Parkinson's patients so it's it was I don't want this to sound cynical, but it was a wonderful surprise how united this community is. I would also bet, Jerry, that you know more about Parkinson's disease than most <laughs> neurologists do now, just from, just from this kind of experience. And that's my whole point, that when you're with people and you are watching people that are dealing with this, you learn just so much more than you would by reading. Yes, and, and to further that point, the, the interactions Gina had with patients and uh, medical professionals were beyond just appointments. They were real human interactions. And I think all of us can agree, that's where we learn the most and, and that's what we're going to retain the most. So, uh, and I think that's a big part of what Metaflix is trying to do. Let's humanize the approaches to these different challenges. Absolutely. You've taken it from just a clinical perspective to a real world relatable perspective. 
and you do retain those kind of things more. Gina, I'm so excited to hear from you. Um, if you could share a little bit about what drew you to this project and sharing your journey and giving us such a personal snapshot of your life on what it was like for you to go through this. Could you share a little bit about that? Sure. I mean, before doing this project, I, I've always participated in outreach and advocacy work in BC with the Parkinson's communicate, community there. Um, and this kind of was another extension of that. It's my goals in doing this advocacy and outreach work are to spread awareness that young onset Parkinson's disease exists, um, share knowledge with other people in the community and outside of the community. And then also just to kind of reach out to people that have it or know somebody that has it that are, that are hiding and they're, they're not connecting with people in the community and not getting the support that they need. Um, so when I met Jerry and he voiced these goals too, I, I said, all right, well, I'm taking a road trip this summer, feel free to join me. And then it kind of just went from there. Um, and that's, that's pretty, that was pretty much my motivating, you know, my motivating factor behind this. And that was a long trip. Yeah. In a car with two dogs. Two dogs, no radio. <laughs> I applaud <laughs> you for that. One of the themes that I heard in this program, um, you know, with starting at the beginning with your, your friends and then the people you met along the way, and then when you got back home and you reconnected with your family was the importance of your tribe yeah. and your support. Yeah. And, you know, we talk a lot about, especially like PMD Alliance talks a lot about how important support is for yeah. people to really connect. But I think you really have um, underscored that. Like, if, can you talk a little bit about like what you've learned about the need for people to have their tribe? The need for people, I mean- Yeah, they need to have their tribe. So if, they're don't, yeah, if they don't I'm have happy. a little support system, what would you say to them? It just, I think it's a fundamental thing about human nature. We have, we're from tribes. We were tribal at one point and we still are. And now it's just in the form of community. And maybe some people have, you know, their connection with other people online. Maybe it's just in their, their neighborhood, um, maybe a senior citizen group or like a, you know, a sports league or something. But I think everybody needs to be part of something. Um, just they have that connection. I, and I think that's, it was a huge killer of um, the COVID pandemic. It really impacted people in a lot of ways because it limited their access to their, their tribe, their respective tribes. Um, I mean, right now, it's like ironic talking right now in light of um, what we just saw, but the last two months have been some of the more challenging ones that I've experienced in the entire eight years that I've been symptomatic. And I've been home with family and with friends that have been really, really supportive. And whether it's helping me take care of the dogs, um, helping me just wash my hair. Some days I, I was you know, not doing so well, I couldn't even wash my own hair. Um, bringing me to medical appointments and um, realizing going through the, the new grieving process with the new neurologist telling me your Parkinson's symptoms are really light, but whatever you have going on now, these new neurological symptoms that have emerged, they're not dopamine dependent. There's something else. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like a new adventure and have, going through this with the support of family and friends, whether they're out in, in Vancouver or whether they're here locally in New York has made things a lot easier. And um, just even having my sister attend the appointments and write, take notes. She's incredibly painstakingly organized. Her handwriting is impeccable. Um, I don't take notes. You know, I never really took notes in meetings with neurologists. I paid attention. I made mental notes. And maybe I'd go home and take some notes or write things down, but she writes everything down. And it makes, it's the little things like that that make things a lot easier. And if, if somebody doesn't have a family um, that they could you know, go on a road trip and crash with, um, it's, there are people in the Parkinson's community that are, that are more than willing to reach out and connect with them and just talk to them or be a support group or be a sounding board or laugh, you know, share entertaining stories. And I really think it's important for them to know that and, and to reach out and connect with the community. They don't have to run and, um, make movies and, you know, lead support groups. They can connect in smaller ways and they have to figure out, use all these resources and these groups around to figure out what they need and what works for them. So, you know, this was a long journey and it sounds like even since you've gotten back home, you've had quite a few other things that have occurred. What have you learned through this process about yourself? 
Oh God. Because I think we learn more about ourselves in adversity than we do oh, when, yeah. when we're on a high top experience. So I'm sure some things about your own personal strengths have surfaced. Yeah, I think, you know, I've in the like in the midst of all this going on the past two months, my sister and I just start laughing some days. Like, you know, yes, my dog Zach is really sick and he fell in his own poop yesterday and then it was all over my my shirt my jacket and you know it's sometimes you have to laugh like stop life and just pause and look at the situation and be like this is absolutely ridiculous like everything is just everything seems ridiculous right now you have to just laugh at it it's just you have to have a sense of humor about everything no matter the worst day of your life you have to step back and be like oh my god this, this is this is this is a shit show this is hilarious and then keep going and then also I, I'm I want to relate back to what Dave said in the video. I don't know if he said it. I remember him saying it in person. Um, he, he hinted at in the video when I asked him about how the hell he stays positive. He didn't even pause and he responded just through gratitude. And every day since then, I've, spoke, I've kept in touch with Dave and Therese. And Dave, this Dave has a gratitude journal. This cute little old man has a gratitude journal, like a little hippie. And he writes in it every day. He wakes up at like 6 a.m. and he writes in it and he reminds himself what to be grateful for. And since then he shared a lot of stuff that has happened with his family in the past. And the guy's been through some serious, serious trauma. And he still every day wakes up really early, goes through his gratitude journal and finds positivity and some, something to keep him going every day. If that guy can do it, all of us can do it. Whether you have Parkinson's or not. <laughs> right, and it does help. Gina, we had a question from someone wanting to know what type of Parkinson's you would say you have. Well, according to my current neurologist, I have little, a little bit of Parkinson's. So I don't know how to answer that. Um, I have a GBA variant, which researchers at the NIH, as well as my current neurologist, don't seem to think that that's a big factor. Um, uh, what else? I, I got, I came down, well, I developed neurological symptoms after I got out of the hospital and almost died of pneumonia and some other flu-like thing that got me into the hospital. And then when I got hydrated, they learned I had pneumonia. So maybe it's post, you know, something like what happened in 1918, post serious viral infection, I developed a neurological condition, whatever it is. Um, right now, literally right now, like as of a couple of days ago, the current neurologist I've been seeing is, is kind of said, some of, the, some of the symptoms you're experiencing are dopamine dependent. They, they, she observed me many, many days over four hour period and, and said, okay, this, this symptom that you have went away when I, over, over a certain number of hours when you took dopamine, these other symptoms didn't, they're unaffected. So she stripped me back. I'm not telling, not encouraging anybody to do this at all, but I'm currently taking a third of less than a third of the medication that I was taking a month and a half ago. So we're taking some drastic measures to try to figure out what's going on. And it's likely, she thinks so far, it's likely a combination of Parkinson's and something else to be determined. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's hard to, it's hard to answer the question of what kind of Parkinson's I have. There are people are just starting to, to believe Parkinson's is kind of like a, a, a group of different syndromes. So I don't, at this point, I have no idea where I fall into that group. All I know is that um, whatever I have going on is not purely just Parkinson's. So maybe, maybe I can uh, maybe I can make a, a comment yeah. here. Let me say. Um, Thank you, Doctor Sir. <laughs> first of all, um, I think it's important for every patient to realize that they're different than everybody. Uh, this is one of those conditions where every patient has a unique set of problems. Even though we call it all Parkinson's disease, um, everybody's different, and that's why novel forms of medical education are so important for for patients. Um, that's, that's point number one. The other thing is that um, Gina's is right. There, this may turn out to be a, a syndrome with many different causes that have a final common pathway. That probably doesn't have a lot of importance in terms of ultimate therapy uh, or, or novel therapies because you're, you're still gonna do the same kind of things. And Gina's is describing classic fluctuations that I'm sure a lot of other patients saw on the call know, know and experience. Um, and there are approaches to everybody. And, and, and the one thing that I think is really important is that uh, in all my years of treating patients with Parkinson's disease, I have never gotten to a point where I've said, can't do anything. I've run out of ideas. There is always something to try. Uh, I think that's a really important fact for most of these folks to know. 
And I think as a patient too, we, we have an endless number of options too. Our neurologist only can give us certain advice about certain things, but um, we can jump in a pool. We can take yoga class. We, there's all, we can go for a hike. There's a lot of different things that we have to do outside of the neurologist's office and see what works for us and what makes us feel worse and what makes us feel better. And you bring up a really good point because it's not just medications. It's, it's multiple things that we can do uh, for our wellness. So, and I loved how you highlighted that in the video that you were doing look like martial arts <laughs> and yoga, mindfulness, all of those things can really play a part in that. So I think this might be a question for either Matt or Jerry, but someone had written in wanting to know if Mediflix has any films about uh, Parkinson's for those who've maybe been diagnosed more than 20 years. Are there anything for those who maybe are advanced stages or anything around DBS? There uh, are, uh, th there, are two, uh, there are two segments uh, on Mediflix currently uh, where longer term uh, Parkinson's patients have been profiled. And uh, I would encourage you to take a, a look at that. It's on the Metaflix platform and it is another variation of the journey uh, among two more senior people who have been living quite well and quite successfully with the condition over a much longer period of time. There are also, um videos of, of me interacting with patients at various stages of disease. And um, I would encourage uh, your questioner to look at some of those videos and some of those interactions. And we just dropped the link again um, so you can grab it. And before we close out the program today, I will um, direct you guys how to share the chat so that you'll have that to reference to some of those links. And I have a question for Jerry. So Jerry, you have such an incredible background. It's exciting, all the things that you have done. And I think it adds so much value. This is, clear, this is clearly the highlight of his life. I just want to make sure you <laughs> understand. Well, that. I hope so. <laughs> Meeting Gina and Matt has been the highlight. Absolutely. <laughs> I just want that on the record since you're recording this. Yes. <laughs> and it's forever now written in stone. So, um, but how have you used your talents to tell a story like this? Are there other stories besides Gina's and the one that we referenced before that you're hoping to tell that you haven't told yet? Um, is there anything down the pipeline that, that you might want to Well, I, yeah, I mean, I am involved in a couple of character driven stories that are not medically related, but it does bring me back to why this particular project was so appealing to me because how do you tell the Parkinson's story knowing that each patient is such an individualized situation? And when you find somebody like Gina, it gets kind of easy because Gina would be the star of any kind of story, whether it was Parkinson's or not. She's such a character and such a really appealing person to be around. So um, I'm kind of... Uh, agnostic in this regard. And, and um, I've been very lucky to come in contact with the people at Metaflix and Matt and, and Gina, but a good story is a good story. This one happens to be about a Parkinson's patient. And Gina, because you do have such a great story to tell, and it's obvious that you use multiple forms of uh, wellness activities to help you. Um, someone wants to know what is your diet like? Because I know they featured that a little bit um, with your family having to throw out the cheese. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about your diet? Um, yes. Okay, so preceding that, I come from an, a very traditional Italian-American family. Nobody's in good shape. Everybody's overweight. They don't, some of them eat, they do eat vegetables. Um, I'm trying to get them to eat more organic food, but they, they just, eat like traditional Italian American families do. Um, cheese, meat are very important and um, they eat a lot of it and telling them that you don't eat meat or cheese is like, I mean, it's like sacrilegious. <laughs> so, um, but I, I don't, so I, I, when I did this project, I wasn't eating any meat at all. I've been advised by some people to slowly incorporate a little bit back in. So I've been eating venison um, like a couple times a month. And, um, 
I do eat a little bit of sheep cheese because I, I can't resist Pecorino Romano. <laughs> and it just gets, it, it winds up on my food. Like, even though you ask, no, it, it winds up in there. And my family's cooking really a lot for me these days. Um, so, but I eat predominantly plants. I focus on um, just good digestive health and probiotics and lots of fiber. We, we definitely need it um, with any, any, I think everybody needs it, not just people with Parkinson's, but um, mostly plant-based. I don't, you know, I'm not perfect. I, I eat like, lately I've been eating like cannolis three times a week just to get through winter, I think. Um, but I think that's like another, if it should be on the food pyramid, that's another food group. Um, but so I, so all jokes aside, I eat predominantly plants, plant-based food. Um, I and introduced, started introducing a little bit of meat and a little bit of bone broth made from like, you know, deer bones that are running wild and um, some grass fed beef bones. And um, I have a really good nutritionist. Her name's Elizabeth Troy. She wrote, she's written books on this. Um, and I follow their advice. This is not, I don't know what I'm doing. I follow the advice of really um, smart people who are experts in this area. And, and it's not like, it's not like a fixed thing. I, I tweak it depending on how I feel as I go along. So I, I pay attention. Sometimes in the winter, I feel differently than the summer about um, what I'm eating. But um, that's pretty much it. If anybody has any questions about, you know, specific things, I could, I suppose I could keep the food log. I don't really pay much attention, um, but. You know, and how about supplements? I know that's something that a lot of people are curious about. And, and I know it's different for everybody, especially if they're taking other medications and things like that. Um, uh, but are there any things that you have found to be helpful? And also who is the nutritionist that you're reading? They want to know. Oh, my nutritionist, her name is Elizabeth Troy. She's, she's one of my best friends and she's also an integrated nutritionist. She's, she's in Florida now. She lives and works there um, as a wellness director at a, like a health resort. Um, I think it's called Pritikin Institute. I don't remember the exact name, but, um, but I think people can contact her through social media or if somebody really wants to meet her, they can contact me and I'll put them in touch. But um, I think, you know, it's important to get connected with a good nutritionist, like a holistic nutritionist or in integrative nutritionist, somebody that'll look at you, look at the big picture, look at all of your, your blood work, listen to what your neurologists are saying and listen to what all of your practitioners are saying and help you figure out a plan that works for you. you I mean, Hearing works for me is great, but it might not be the best thing for you. Um, and it's really important to understand that like, like Dr. Stern said about Parkinson's treatment, um, nutrition treatment, whether it's supplements or food plans, it's very individualized and you shouldn't just eat, eat some way that somebody else recommends just because it worked for them, it might not work for you. Um, I think there were a couple other questions. Somebody, I saw it, something flash um, from Elaine, Elaine Brook, Books. She's um, a, a social worker at, at UBC and every, <laughs> Elaine has kept me from doing bad things, making bad decisions, especially when I was on a dopamine agonist. And that's important person to have in your, um, in your, I guess, your group of people that keep you well and healthy. Um, if you're thinking of doing something when you're, especially when you're on an agonist or any of these drugs that we're on, if you think you're doing something, have that person to call <laughs> that'll talk you objective talk to you objectively and elaine gave me some of the best advice that i've gotten in my life um a couple of years ago when i was making making a decision she said regardless of what's right or wrong what's fair or unfair um every decision you need to make right now should be through the lens of what's in the best interest of your health and that's it and since then i've been doing that so thank you elaine thank you very much um i've been doing that and it's it's probably saved me a lot of heartache and headache um since then and I saw somebody else wrote something about, am I on antidepressants? Not currently. I probably should be, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, but, you know, I don't recommend them. I don't not recommend them. I think it's, a, again, it's an important thing for each person to determine what's, what's good for them, what works and what doesn't work. Awesome. And those were very wise words from Elaine. So. She's the best. If anybody has a chance to meet her, reach out to her. She's a special human being. And I have a question for Erin Yan. So it's exciting to see a company like Supernus wanting to support this sort of project. So what has been, what has been about this project that's been the most impactful or powerful for you? Yeah, I think that, you know, we spend a lot of time in the community. Um, we do a lot of partnerships across the country. And I feel like what we wanted to present and then be a part of was real patients 
showing real stories, right? And everybody's journey is different. And I think that it's really just about kind of being inspiring and showing the laughs and the cries, but, and really just taking it all in stride and right. And celebrating these moments that we have every day. And it's a big part of kind of our community partnership and our outreach. That's just a big part of our Parkinson's portfolio and why it was just so fun and interesting for us. And we're always looking for new ways and new things. And, and Mediflix was a great kind of tool to engage in a new platform, um, you know, with, everyone kind of across the country we were kind of still in the midst of COVID if you will and so it's just a, a nice and new different way to reach people um, we've been sitting on a lot of zooms so you know we're always excited to just share real stories and, and that's what we're all about and the patient at the end of the day and everybody's different right and so you have to find what works for you and find your tribe as Nina said and you know people that support you so you can share these experiences right you can gain some pearls from from everybody and and that's really kind of the community kind of aspect that we're really wanting to just kind of impart on everyone awesome and again i'm going to invite people to share their stories videos uh you know, you can write something, you can post a picture through the Be Iconic platform. We'll drop those links in again. We only have a couple more minutes. So I just want to invite anyone left on the panel to share any parting comments. Is there any last statements that you would like to make, whether it's Gina or Jerry, Matt? I'd like to uh, just remind everybody that there's um, a lack of cynicism among everybody I've met. There is an amazing amount of commitment and sincerity from the doctors that I've come in contact with, uh, which I think people should understand that doctors actually care and medical professionals are, are invested in the well being of their patients and their, in the advancement of the science. And um, people should be nourished by that. You should be optimistic. There's a lot of good people who care deeply about making the situation better. And there's also a, um, a great sense of humor among the people I've met, both doctors and patients. And that's an embrace of life. So anybody who's maybe a little tentative going forward here, keep in mind that some of the people who have been at this the longest and have dedicated their lives to it are very, very optimistic and very uh, supportive and very sincere. And also a shout out to the caregivers. I've met husbands, I've met wives, I've met best friends and brothers and sisters. And it is amazing what uh, a caregiver can add to the equation. So uh, I think that's worth noting. Thank you for saying that. Matt or Gina, do you have any last comments? You know, I would just, I, I think what Jerry says is really, um, you know, I, I, I hate to even add anything to that because uh, it's so eloquent. Um, but for all the patients that are on this call, um, I think one of the messages here is that you need to figure out for yourself what it is that defines your sense of well being. And it's not what defines Gina's sense of well being. So while her story is illustrative and exemplary, it only has some relevance to you as an individual and doctors cannot figure that out for you. You have to figure that out. Is it your anxiety? Is it your depression? Is it your pain? Is it your tremor? You figure out what it is that defines your own sense of well-being and bring it to your healthcare team. And I'll give you one opportunity to say a parting comment, Gina. Um, I mean, I want to underscore everything that we've discussed, but um, this is individualized and we need, like, if there's anything I've learned in the last month and a half, two months, it's keep, as, keep your stress down as much as po humanly possible. If you can't, find humor in, in the bowels of your stress somewhere to just get through those moments and thank and appreciate all of the care, the care partners or not your care partners, any, anybody helping you, whether they're a doctor or a, or a social worker at, at your clinic. Um, or a friend or a family member, or a neighbor, or your, your dogs, you know, like everything around you. These, these, it's sometimes it's really difficult, not just for us, but for everybody that loves us just to watch us go through this. It's sometimes more painful for them, I think, than it is for us. Um, and just find help and find hope and support wherever you can. And don't be afraid to, to accept it. Just say thank you 
and make sure you're there for other people when they need it. But um, I know a lot of people have other questions. I've seen like, where do you get your venison? Um, <laughs> find a <100 laughs> friend. <laughs> um, I, you can find, I have a bunch of social media stuff I've set up. I think I started using Twitter a couple months ago and Instagram. Um, if you want to find me on there, feel free to send me a direct message. I think, I don't know how to use them very well, but if you search my name on Instagram, I think you can find me. If you can't, maybe ask PMD Alliance and they could connect us, but I'd be happy to answer any other questions anybody has and don't, don't hesitate to reach out anytime. I don't use social media a lot. I use my phone more. So if I don't get back to you immediately, don't freak out just because I'm having a rough day and um, putting my phone down for a bit. But thank you all for you know joining us. Um, this has been a really fun experience. I've been really blessed to work with um, and meet with all these people. And I didn't know Jimmy, Jerry was an uh, Emmy nominee until today. So that, <laughs> that's cool. And the presence of greatness in many ways here. And I had no panel. idea. <laughs> so this has yeah. been fantastic. And, and I want to thank all four of you for being a part of this conversation, sharing this beautiful video. I love that. And I love all the, the interaction that we've had. And we have shared Again, the links to Mediflix, to the Be Iconic. And so for those of you who want to save your chat, just real quick before we end the program, if you just go over to your chat box where there's three little buttons or three little dots, I should say, and you click that, you can pop the box up and it'll say save chat. Then you'll be able to go back and find the websites for Mediflix, for Be Iconic, um, share your stories, learn a little bit more through their beautiful uh their videos that are storytelling. And I want to thank Matt, Jerry, Ariane, and Gina so much for being a part of this program to Supernus and Mediflex for, for allowing us to work with the two of you to, to bring this together. So much thanks to you all. And for everyone joining, I want to thank everyone mm -hmm. and hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.